What's up, everybody? Drake Bill here with another video. Sorry for the few days off with no videos. I just recently went to uh, Kansas to visit some family, so I was off for a few days. Today, we are with the vet yet again. If you notice, I installed the new front lip that has this massive scoop in the center, and it actually goes all the way back and has a huge scoop up to the radiator. If you guys know how these cars are, they have the radiator from the bottom. These are just little fog lights. I honestly don't exactly love the way this fits. There's still quite a little gap right here. The shadow does make it look worse. When the light hits it, it's, it's a lot smaller. But even here on the corners, you can see the gap real big. And it doesn't go up any, any more flush, which kind of sucks. But it works well and it doesn't make my car overheat anymore. So that's a good thing. Today, I actually went and got my muffler delete. Muffler delete, Jesus. And I didn't film, I didn't think I was going to make a video on it today, but we do have some time here at the shop today, so I'm going to do my short throw shifter, and who knows, maybe a couple of this interior trim pieces. I've been having quite a few problems with the shifter. The car doesn't really like going in first gear all the time, and it also really doesn't like going in reverse pretty much at all. Um, I'd like to say it's shifter related because the bushings are super clapped out and it doesn't feel right, but there's a chance it might be clutch or slave cylinder related. Regardless, I have the shifter, so I'm going to put it in. But you can even see a missing, like, the little fucking circle. And even then, with the shifter in reverse, I'll show you right now. I got the keys for it. I also want to get a new key, just so I have all the, you know, the words on the buttons. I also want to get new door buttons. These guys right here. I don't really like the way these ones are. Like, I could tell they're a little bit off. And check it out. See how, like, smushy? This little rubber cover is, I don't like that at all. So with the car off, I'll show you in first, shows, looks just fine, right? But here's the reverse lockout. You push it over, ugh, like real hard, and then you go up. And with the car off, it goes in reverse just fine, which is why I kind of think it's clutch related, but I'll show you right now with the car on. Okay, so I've got the car on, here's first. And I can tell right now it's in first, but sometimes it doesn't really like to go into first all the way. I usually have to go second and then first, but reverse, it goes in reverse lockout a lot easier with the car on. Like, look at how it hits. It literally touches this guy right here. Granted, I do think it's shifted over a little bit, so this whole panel could shift over that way. Um, I'm not sure how much, but enough to where it doesn't touch, but check it out. In reverse, oh, this time it's in. Right now it's in reverse just fine. I'll move the car up here, and I'm gonna back it up, I'll show you. So let's put it in first for now. Okay, so it stayed just fine. Sometimes it'll pop right back out of first. Same with reverse. Reverse, I said the verse. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it in reverse. Like right now, it doesn't feel like it's in. Watch it. Oh, it's in. Okay, well of course, as soon as I wanna show you guys what it, oh, there we go, look, it popped out. So watch, clutch, released, nothing. So back in reverse, you see that? Boom, pops right back out. And it does it sometimes, so I'll go through a couple gears, put it in, and boom, we're back in reverse. So I don't know what is the reason why it's doing that. I would like to say it's somewhat shifter related, but there's a chance that it's also um, clutch related. Let's get a little exhaust clip. You could even hear the cats On diesel you could hear the cats like rattling around or some shit so because i don't like that sound i ordered uh long tube headers and the connecting pipes and x pipe and everything so i'm gonna get rid of my stock headers i'm even thinking about ordering my heads cam set up here soon um i'm thinking about going with the btr stage four cam and then ported and better valve train ls1 heads we'll see for now let's grab the shit that we need i gotta pull this guy off and then start pulling apart the shifter I'm gonna pull off this T-top too, just so air gets through here a little bit better. Check this out, boom. Drop this guy. Oh, right there. And this thing's ready to come off. I also found a website that sells all the trim pieces that I need. Like you can see this big old chunk taken out. I'm gonna replace all the window trim, like the roof, the fucking T-top or target top, whatever you wanna call it. All the trim along here, as well as the hatch. Back in here and the door. Like all the trim, get all new trim. These are all parts for the vet. But check it out, I got a new boot. We got Miss Shelby. Got a new boot. 
then some interior pieces. These are the latches for little armrest as well as the glove compartment. So I'm gonna put these guys in. Here is our shifter with the centering springs. I'm gonna put the heavier weight centering springs and uh, hopefully this fixes our air shoe quite a bit. I assume taking that or taking this off is gonna be really easy. So I'm sure all the tabs are broken. So this should just come right out. Oh, also don't worry about my temporary exhaust tips. I just ordered some right now, some Mustang exhaust tips that I'll make work. So for now, that's a temporary solution. So I'm noticing that when I'm trying to pull it up, whatever's behind here, this big box is getting caught underneath. So I have to be able to slip it back. But in order to do that, I have to take out this guy. This looks fairly simple. Couple tens, move this shit out of my way. Couple tens, and this should come right out. Let's do it real quick. Okay, I've got it loose. It can come off. I'm gonna see if I can set up my camera right here somehow to record. Okay, I can't get it set up there. You're gonna have to deal with it in here. Oh, I dropped my chapstick, God damn it! One thing that sucks about vents is if you drop something back here, getting to it fucking sucks. Especially, I don't know if the difference between these and the base seats, but these are C7 seats. I don't know if it's bigger or not. Put that right back in my pocket. Pull this guy out. Okay, so now we have this free floating. Getting hung up by something in here. Oh this guy let's pull this off all right pulled out the sensor got that out and now since this is broken i don't have to undo the connections on this guy i think i just have to pull back and finagle it until i get it out look at this look at that shift knob baby i ordered a shift knob but it still hasn't came in yet so i don't know what's up with that but now this guy could come off set her over there keep in mind this is a salvage car from from theft so it's kind of fucked up like this shit wasn't connected i don't know what's going on back here like what i don't even know what this is or what it's supposed to be looks like maybe a clip for the um for the little cigarette lighter thing i don't know i don't know bro those cars been around passed around i also ordered the bracket for this lower piece right here i have the bracket i'm just waiting for this lower piece to come in so until then i'm not gonna fix this Looks like right now I have three tens. This plate will come off and there's some more bolts and nuts under here. I do have my power tools, but I think for this job, I'm just gonna stick to my quarter inch so I don't have to go back and forth to my toolbox. This will do plenty good. Break them loose. Follow back up, just the socket. Let's not drop these. Oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> got him got his bitch ass oh i dropped it oh don't 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 lose it let's see i got it i don't know what the fuck that is that's like a whole booger wipe that shit on the carpet so now this little plate comes out keep in mind i've never done it on i've never done a shifter on one of these cars so it's my first time looks like we have a torque torx bit right here a couple tens i think i want to start off and neutral, take off these guys, and then uh, see what we have. There's a lot of play, it almost seems like a nine, but if the 10 works, I'll twerk. One. Two. I also wanna do a double den in here. Uh, I know they make kits for these. I'm not exactly sure what den i want to use but they do make this trim piece the center piece without the center part in there there's three but yeah as soon as i'm able to afford that shit, i'll do it but i'm poor so i'll have to wait okay here's the fourth one and then now it looks like there's a little spring i don't know what that this little retainer thing is but let's try and pull up on this guy oh look at that I don't know what that is. Whatever it is, it looks broken on the bottom. That looks sheared off. Maybe that's part of my problem. This bush thing looks fine. It could use more grease, but when I transfer it over to my new shifter, I'll add grease on it for sure. This looks pretty straightforward though. It looks like I just have to swap over that bottom bushing, drop it in the collar. And then I think this might be like a reverse lockout solenoid or something. I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to do some research right now. I'll probably look it up on Google or good old YouTube and see what they call this part right here. Come here, come here, come here. 
my little baby. She's tired right now. Shelby, look at me. What's up, mama? So cute. So we're gonna get this guy unboxed. It looks like this plate is a lot thicker than the OEM ones. So it looks like we do have longer bolts to go in. The springs, I just have to see how they sit inside the shifter unless it's already got some. So looking at it, it does already have springs in here and they feel pretty heavy. So I'm gonna leave them with the springs that it has in there. And if I feel like I wanna go heavier, I'll go heavier. But realistically, all I have to do is adjust this guy here, this guy here to wherever the gear stops me. And then we're ready to drop this guy in. The gasket here on the shifter doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse it. Looks somewhat like silicone, but um, I'm just gonna reuse it. I'm not worried about it. I see that there's a slot here. I don't know if that's the front or the back. I guess I just gotta fuck with it and see what's what. Excuse the mess on the toolbox, but I got this little collar off. I'm gonna grease it really nice. I just cleaned it out all the crevices and everything else. So I'm gonna grease it. What I like to use is this stuff called Sly Glide. Oh, a little too much maybe, but <laughs> I like the way it just dude it out. But this is really good stuff. I've used it on all the shifters I've done and I've had no complaints, so it works really well. Ignore all the tools too. I haven't cleaned up the shop today yet. Okay, I got the collar on. It's all greased up. I didn't see anything that talks about how this uh, notch is supposed to face. So hopefully, I don't know, maybe this is a good way. Hopefully it's the right way, I mean. It looks like it did come with the new gasket, so we're gonna throw that on there. Right now I'm just cleaning it with a razor as best I could get it. I'll even run through back with a wire brush, clean up the rest, and then uh, put the new gasket on in the shifter. So I quickly had just hand tightened these bolts, all four of them, and it went all the gears just fine, but putting in reverse is really stiff. And so let me kind of explain. When you go over, there's these two springs that go straight down and there's a pan that goes across and it goes like this, right? When you go left and right. Well, they're super, super stiff. So I think I'm gonna take these guys out and swap them for the softer spring so it's a little bit easier because it's really fucking hard to get in reverse. I'm not gonna lie, changing out the springs really didn't do all that much. But what I am noticing is when I go to push this, check it out, look at this gap right here. See the little hole? Look at that. That's part of my problem with my shifter fucking up. So I have to tighten down these guys so it stops moving around a bunch. There is bushings inside of here. I'll probably order new bushings, but for now we could tighten it up. But I just have to figure out, you know, what is good for the car to stay in reverse. Well, I think I have good news. I pulled it all the way back. That way it fully engages first gear. Um, and, oh, sorry, reverse, because as I go over and up, this fork goes back, right? So I pulled it all the way back, snugged it up. These were super fucking loose, like extraordinarily loose. So I slipped it all the way back, tightened them up pretty snug, turned on the car, went into first gear first, let out the clutch a little bit with the e-brake up to see if it would like, you know, bog down, stall out without popping it out because it usually would pop it out by then. It was fine. Put it in reverse, did the same thing, and it was actually pushing through the e-brake, which means it's enough force that if this was not aligned right, it would have popped right back into neutral. So that's a good sign. I also have a lot less flex, like even, uh, so look, let me, let me fucking show you. Let's see, hold on. Ugh, never mind. I have a lot less flex, actually almost no flex on the shifter before I would push it and the whole thing would like, you know, this whole bracket with the shifter would go like this and twist over because this bitch was loose. So I'm gonna snug these up all the way, tighten the absolute loop piss out of them. And then I'm gonna do these, oh, I got hiccups, excuse me. I'm gonna do these adjustments. Here, I just tightened them. I'm actually gonna go on a quick test drive and just make sure that we're good. Let's grab our keys. She's stiff, man, super stiff. Reverse is still really, really tight getting it in that lockout, but that's fine. I mean, how often do you touch reverse? Besides every single time that you fucking park, I'm gonna have to double fist this bitch. Let's put on that good old shift knob. Let's go for a little test drive. Let's see how we do. All right, so here we are in first gear. Holy shit, that is notchy. I also think part of the reason why I couldn't power shift to third gear was because it kept slipping the entire block forward. And so that being said, it was, you know, not actually engaging all the way. Okay, first gear through sixth passes the test. I'm gonna go from first to reverse a few times and park it a couple times. 
and just make sure reverse works as I need it to. Looks like reverse passes the test. It is a little bit tricky, but honestly, with the shift knob in and the car on, it goes in reverse, that lockout much, much easier. But you could just see how stiff and stable it is. And it's super notchy, very notchy. I'm very happy with it. And the clearances are fine here. So I'm just gonna lock out this piece right here and call it a day and wrap up this part. We've got everything tight, locked in. I got these adjusted how I prefer because the further down you go, the stiffer it gets, the higher up, the looser it gets. And I don't want it too stiff. Like it's already a little bit past my personal preference, but it'll do. I don't want these to be so far backed out that they actually back themselves out. But these are in far enough that I'm fine with them. Um, now I'm gonna put on this here plate as well as the actual shift boot inside the um, tray here. I don't know if I'm missing anything for this. Sorry, I don't know if I'm missing anything for this, but we'll see. I've never, like I, got, like I said, I've never done a shifter on these cars before. Just like that, it's in and put together. I'm still waiting for my shift knob to come in. And then uh, it looks like just this little slot for the set screw, as you can see there. So I'm waiting for my shift knob to come in. I don't even know if it uses set screw or not, but I got the new boot in. Why'd I say it like that? Got the new boot in and uh, I wasn't missing anything. It has its own little retainer thing in there. So that's super dope. And it's like really nice leather. They claim real leather. I doubt it, but I mean, much better than was. This was an open hole. And so the hot air would go through bypass stock shifter through the boot and then up through here. And it was hot as fuck in here all the time. And so the new shifter is a wider base so that little uh, weather strip actually hugs it really nice. And then this is gonna keep all the rest of that air out. So that's dope. I'm honestly not too sure I'm gonna put in the new trim pieces just because I do have new panels themselves. I'm gonna do it at the same time. So there's no point in putting them in for now. And then, you know, going back and replacing them after I get the new panels in. Cause then at that point I'm risking breaking those little tabs that hold them in. So this might just be it. Now that we have the shifter and everything buttoned back up, all the tools are put away. I'm gonna try and power shift second to third gear because before it would kind of lock me out. I would have to get the RPMs all the way back down to like 4,000 RPM before I could actually put it in third. So I'm hoping this fixes our issue. Right now I'm gonna go test it out. My car now sits so low because I lowered the front as much as I could after I uh, put on my new wheels and tires. And then I added the front lip and this front lip sits even lower than the last one. Dude, it scrapes on everything. I already know I'm gonna go through your lips on this car for sure. All right, let's go do a test pull. Second to third gear. Dude, this shifter is so notchy, I love it. Oh, great, a car pulled out. It even goes into gear like butter. Like, I wish I could explain to you how easily, easily it goes into gear. Like nothing, effortless but it's very notchy and it centers itself. And it's like a guaranteed, you know, I'm in gear. It's not kind of like how it was before where I would think like, fuck, is it really in there? Is it gonna pop out on me or not? Okay, now we could do our little test pull. Yeah, it works! Let's go! It's hard as fuck to slap around gears and record at the same time. I was granny shifting that motherfucker, but dude, it works. I was able to bang it in the third, no problems, all the way at the top of red line. I'm gonna do one more. Let's go! You guys have no idea how excited that makes me, bro. Before, like, I'd be on the, on the freeway at the races, right, going to film or whatever. And let's say I have to pass somebody and I'm going 60 or 70 miles an hour. I mean, 65 miles an hour, of course, I'm going to pass somebody. I couldn't drop to third gear. I had to do it in fourth. And it would just lug itself because even just cruising, it wouldn't go into third gear at hard RPMs. Regardless of if I was banging gears or not, it just wouldn't go in. But obviously, that was our shift. That was a problem. So that saves me thousands of dollars and a whole day of labor. Because to do these clutches, you have to drop the rear end, the torque tube, and then the clutch. It's a whole fucking process, and I've done it once before, and I don't want to do it again, but I know one day I'm gonna have to do it in this car. And of course, literally on this little hoop right here, it scrapes. I can't, it's like not even as low as other cars that I'm sure that you guys have seen, but it goes all the way up to the top of my foot. That's about it. It's super low, like look at, just from exiting parking lots, it's already curling 
the plastic. So who knows how many lips we're gonna go through, how long does this one will last me. But there we have it, dude. The fucking shifter fixed our issue. I was praying to God it wasn't my synchros in the trans or anything like that because that shit's not cheap, bro. Soon enough, I actually have to sand down all the clear coat because the clear coat's hammered. I also have some deep, deep scratches all over the place. Like, look at the clear coat here. I have to sand it all down because I am prepping it to get wrapped. I already paid for the wrap. It's going to be getting done. I'm not going to say what color, but it soon enough is going to be done here, probably in the next week. I'm going to do all the prepping myself, the sanding, as well as the front lip, side skirts, the mud flaps and everything. I'm going to pull those off, paint them gloss black myself. And then here, I'm hoping that um, I could get all the way through to the fiberglass and not have to worry about it like fucking up real bad because this is fiberglass. These are panels uh, from Chevy. They're all fiberglass, same as the quarter panels. And when they crack, they'll continue cracking. So the wrap's gonna be fine since it's flexible, but I'm hoping it's not gonna flake away too, too much. Like let's say he's going to put the wrap on, stretch it or whatever, and it pulls paint off because then he has to redo the whole door. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at DrakeBuilt. Stick around for the channel because I'm gonna do way more vet content. This is one of my favorite cards I've ever owned. So stick around for the build and we're just going up from here, baby. Don't forget to subscribe. Catch you in the next one. Deuces.